Welcome to Love Worth Finding with pastor, teacher, and author Adrian Rogers, reaching out with God's love, bringing people to Christ, touching lives around the world, and helping you find the answers you need today. Join us as we prepare to open God's Word and discover how your life can be changed forever by His great love worth finding. Listen to this glorious theme, this song of praise to Jesus' name. He who came from heaven above, driven by redeeming love. Oh, my soul. Dry up your tears, banish all your guilty fears. See that guilt and curse removed, canceled by redeeming love. He ransomed me from hell with blood. And by Wonderful, wonderful song. Thank you, Chris Decker. 
Find in God's Word, would you, Hebrews chapter 12. And in a moment we're going to begin reading in verse 14. I've already told you that there's a great problem, and that is the problem of bitterness. And it is bitterness that blows out the candle of joy and leaves the soul in darkness. And I'm afraid more people have a root of bitterness uh, than we dare think. Look, if you will, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Now, here's our key phrase, lest any root of bitterness, root of bitterness, springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Now, what is bitterness? Well, uh, sometimes if you see a person who is bitter, they are a person who is very much like a porcupine. Uh, they may have a lot of good points, but they're hard to be near. And uh, they are harsh. They are critical. They're judgmental. They're sarcastic, and they're filled with anger. But they're not always like a porcupine. Sometimes they're like an iceberg, very cool, very aloof, very diffident. Uh, they are politely indifferent to people. They go their own way. They have an air about them that I don't need anybody. But like an iceberg, most of their problem is beneath the surface. And, and then others who are bitter are not uh, like a porcupine or like an iceberg. They're more like a crybaby. They're sullen. Uh, they wallow in self-pity. They're always uh, filled with moroseness. And uh, they, they're sad. And a part of the problem is they are eaten up with bitterness. Now, bitterness has done untold damage to churches, untold damage to homes. The Bible says in Colossians 3, verse 19, Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Sometimes rather than being the better half, they are the bitter half. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Some in this congregation are chained in a prison of bitterness. And by the way, bitterness does more to hold back the power of God in revival, I am uh, convinced, uh, than uh, liberalism. Uh, bitterness does more to hold back the power of God in revival than does alcohol or pornography. It keeps the people of God from having the power of God and the holiness of God that they need in their hearts and in their lives. And much of this bitterness, as I've already said, is, is found in the people of God. We have bitter brothers, sour sisters, caustic Christians. And the Bible speaks of a root of bitterness. Now, we're going to look at this uh, rooting out bitterness under three headings. First of all, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the germination of bitterness. The germination of bitterness. How does, the, how does the root get there? How does it germinate? Well, two things are necessary for germination. One is the seed and the other is the soil. Now, what is the seed of bitterness? A bitter person is somebody who has been hurt. That hurt is the seed of bitterness. What is the soil? The soil is a heart that harbors hostility. It does not deal with this hurt with the grace of God. And so you become a bitter person. It goes beneath and it takes root and it stays there and the root grows deeper. And the things that are seen in your life, uh, that's just simply the fruit of that deep root. It, the seed is a hurt. The soil is a heart that harbors that hurt. Now, that is the germination of bitterness. I want you to see the second thing. 
not only the germination of this bitterness, but I want you to see the devastation of this bitterness. Look, if you will, in verse 15. He speaks of a root of bitterness springing up. It doesn't just stay underground. It, it springs up, and it says, lest a root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and many be defiled. Bitterness will trouble you personally, and it will trouble society, all of those around you. I've shared what I'm about to share with you before, but it's so pertinent right now. I want to share it again. And in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, just put your bookmark over here in Hebrews 12, and you may want to turn to Ephesians chapter 4 because you're going to see how bitterness devastates. You're going to see a chain reaction of bitterness. Here is an incredible passage of Scripture. In Ephesians chapter 4, look, if you will, in verse uh, 26. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means keep a short account. Don't fail to get that hurt out of your heart. Don't let the sun set on it. Keep a short account with God. Be angry and sin not. Don't, don't uh, harbor hostility. Neither give place to the devil. To give place to the devil is just another way of saying let bitterness take root. Now watch this. Uh, skip on down, if you will, to verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now watch verse 31. Let all bitterness, he's talking about bitterness now, but notice what follows bitterness. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now just park right there on that verse, verse 31. That is an incredible verse that tells us uh, the bitter fruit of this bitter root. The soil is a hurt. The seed is a heart that harbors the hurt. The root is bitter. Now notice the fruit that is bitter. First of all, he says bitterness. Bitterness. You're harboring a hurt. And then he mentions in verse 31, wrath. Because wrath follows bitterness. What the, the Greek word wrath has the idea of heat, that which is hot. If you were to take some oily rags, uh, put a match to them, put them in a closet, and close the door and have them packed down tight, they would sit there and smolder. They would get hotter and hotter, but probably would not burst into flame. They would just sit there and smolder. That's the idea. Uh, a wrath is this internal heat, this the smoldering that people feel when the bitterness comes. First bitterness, and then wrath, and then notice anger. What's the difference between wrath and anger? Anger is that which is outward. Wrath is that which is inward. It's that slow burn. But if those smoldering rags are in the closet, and somebody opens the closet door, and the oxygen hits those rags, then they burst to flame. Have you ever seen people, we, we say they... They fly off the handle, uh, something happens, and they, uh, they just seem to have this burst of anger. What you don't realize is that that, uh, that slow burn was there for a long time. And that slow burn was there because this person is bitter. This person has been hurt, and all that has happened is some oxygen. Somebody's opened the door and a little, little oxygen there on that slow burn. But now what's the next thing? Watch it. Bitterness, wrath. Anger, and then he mentions in verse 31, clamor. The word clamor has the idea of speech. When we get angry, then we lose control of this thing in our mouths called the tongue. The Bible says the tongue is a fire, and it is set on fire of hell. When that, that hellish fire begins to burn called anger, we begin to say things. We, we get loud, and, and we begin to uh, lift our voices and and we express that anger. At that moment, we are in deep, deep danger because our tongue is set on fire of hell. And then once we lift our voice and we begin to speak to other people in a louder voice or in a hostile voice, then what is the next thing that he's mentioned there? It's evil speaking. Once you hear yourself saying, talking this way, 
the devil be comes alongside and whispers in your ear and he gives you coach. He's, he begins to coach you. And he says, uh, say this, say that. And you can say things you never even thought of saying. And if you are, have a child, you may say to that child, I wonder why your mother and I ever even had you. You've been such a disappointment to me. You're the most unthankful child I've ever seen. You've given us nothing but trouble since you've been born. Or a man might say to his wife, frankly, you're stupid. I wish I'd never met you. It, it was a mistake when we ever got married. Now, you don't mean those things. But now you're, you are, you're doing evil speaking. She might say to you, well, why don't we just get a divorce? I, I'm sorry I ever met you. You may say, I hate you. I wish you were dead. You say all kinds of terrible, horrible things that you don't mean, but you mean them in the moment. First bitterness, then wrath, that slow burn, then anger, and then clamor, and then evil speaking, but it doesn't end there. What's next? Malice. What is malice? Malice is the desire to hurt somebody. That's when a man will take his wife and shove her against the wall. That's when a, a, a woman will take up a, a dish and throw it at her husband. That's when a man gets in an automobile and begins to drive as fast as the car will drive because he's so full of malice terrible thing. The desire to hurt. Sometimes a, a father will slap a child. What do we call it? Going ballistic. Sometimes a man will walk into an office where he used to work, pull out a gun, and begin to shoot at people indiscriminately. What has happened? Bitterness has been there. There's been a, a root of bitterness that bitterness begins to do a slow burn, which is wrath, and that wrath becomes anger, and that anger becomes evil speaking, and that evil speaking uh, becomes clamor, rather, and that clamor becomes evil speaking, and that evil speaking becomes malice. Now, we've seen the seed, and we've seen the soil. We've seen the root, and we've seen the fruit. You see, the root is underground, but the fruit is above ground, and we wonder sometimes, why do people act like they act? Why are they so sullen? Or why are they so critical? Or why are they so sad? All of that is just simply the, the fruit of that bitter root. Now, we, we have talked about the germination. We've talked about the devastation. Let's spend a few moments talking about the eradication. Every farmer wants to know how to eradicate weeds. Uh, how, how, what are we going to do? How are we going to get this root out? How are we going to root out this bitterness? Well, may I mention three things to you? First of all, let God reveal it. Let God reveal it. Now, the root is underground. I'm telling you, it's easy to deny and to disguise. And many here, may think I'm talking to somebody else when God is really talking to you. Let God reveal it. When I was studying for this message, I, my mind went to Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, that means test me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What a great prayer that is. I pray that prayer frequently. It's a great prayer from the Word of God. You want to jot it down? Psalm 139, verses uh, 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. You know, sometimes people say, well, if I know my heart, there's no bitterness in me. <laughs> True of the matter is you don't know your heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, and a deceitful heart can't diagnose a deceitful heart. You need to let God, the Holy Spirit, do radical surgery. Let God reveal it. That's the first step. Now, here's the second stop. Let God reveal it. Let grace remove it. Let grace remove it. Look, if you will, in this passage of Scripture. Looking diligently. This is verse 15. Lest any man fail of the grace of God. 
Friend, it, 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 our lack of the grace of God doesn't have the grace of God. You can never root it out even when God shows you it is there without the grace of God. First of all, the grace of God is going to have to forgive you for your bitterness. Bitterness, no matter what somebody has done to you, your reaction is wrong. And ask God to forgive you, and God will forgive you by His grace. What is grace? You see, justice is God giving us what we deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Let me illustrate that. A while back, Joyce and I went out to lunch to a little restaurant, and the waitress who was waiting on us was very distraught, very upset. We could tell. Joyce and I spent perhaps a half an hour speaking with her, trying to share the love of God with this waitress. She was nervous. She was heart sick. And, and we were just pouring out the love of Jesus to this waitress. And I know that God was working through us. But she had to leave, and she said, I'll, I'll put your bill on the table. I'm, I must go. It's my time to go. So when I picked up the bill, she had greatly overcharged me. I know she didn't mean to, but she'd overcharged. Now, this restaurant would not take a credit card. And I looked at that. I said, Joyce, I don't know whether I have enough money to pay this or not. I'll just go and tell the, the owner that I've, I have been uh, overcharged. I said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. That would so embarrass her that if he called her in and criticized her for this, that would, that would be the straw and break her back. I said, we'll just, we'll just pay the bill. That'd be all right. But then I said, but Joyce, if I pay this overcharge, I won't have enough money to leave a tip. And I want to leave a big tip to the person who overcharged me. <laughs> I said, what are we going to do? I said, well, Joyce, so they'll think we're not trying to slip out without paying. I said, you sit here. I'll go get in the car and I'll go home and get some money and come back so we can tip this girl. And so I drove home, got some money, and came back. To tip her. She never knows anything about that unless she's sitting here today. She doesn't know anything about that at all. She doesn't know she overcharged me. She doesn't know we didn't say anything about it. She doesn't know that I had to go home to get a tip. I could have paid the bill if I'd left the tip off. Now, friend, not having to pay the bill that was an overcharge, that's justice. I could just say, this is not right. I, I want what's fair and right. That's justice. Uh, not, however, saying anything about it, that's mercy. But going home to get a tip to the person who overcharged you, that's grace. That's grace. That's grace. You see, justice is God giving us what we deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we deserve. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Now you say, well, you're telling me that to make you sound like such a great guy. No, I'm not telling you that at all for that reason. I'm just telling you that gave me a lot of joy to do that, to drive home. Uh, that, that just gave me an incredible amount of joy rather than resenting something that, that uh, let, let the grace of God, let the grace of God remove it. Thank God for grace. It takes two to forgive, Jesus and you, and you cannot do it without him. I'm telling you that forgiveness is costly, but it is worth it. It is worth it. Now, here's the final thing. Look. Now watch it. If you're a bitter person, let God reveal it, let grace remove it, and let good replace it. Let good replace it. Notice verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace and holiness are linked together. Hatred and hellishness are linked together. You cannot, you cannot have holiness unless you want to follow peace with all men. It doesn't mean that all people are going to be at peace with you, but you can pursue peace. You can follow peace. Oh, it's so much worth it. When you forgive, you say, I can't forgive them. I'm not going to let them off the hook. I want to remind you, you're on the hook with them. You are on the hook with them. When you forgive, you set two people free, and one of them is yourself. That's right. 
Don't harbor hostility. Let God reveal it. Let grace remove it. Let good replace it. And you're going to find out that your life is going to be so wonderful. If you just get out that old root of bitterness. Remember, the seed is a hurt. The soil is a heart that harbors the hurt. The root is underground, but the fruit is above ground. And only God can deal with that root. Is there someone you need to forgive, a family member or a co-worker? If so, do it today and discover the peace and freedom that comes from forgiveness. Or maybe you've realized you're the one who needs to be forgiven. God wants you to experience the complete forgiveness that He offers through repentance and faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Ask Him right now to forgive your sins, to cleanse you, and acknowledge Him as Lord of your life. If today you pray to receive Christ, we thank God for your decision, and we'd like to help you get started on your Christian walk by sending you these resources. They'll help you find answers for many of your questions as you learn to walk with Christ. Now, you can get a complete copy of today's message by mentioning The Root of Bitterness when you contact us. And if you'd like to share this lesson with someone else, ask about half-priced additional CDs and DVDs. Plus, if you'd like to have more messages like the one you heard today, consider the series, Winning the Battles Within. Struggles never cease, but some are more personal than others. Find out how to have victory over the issues you face every day. Contact us today for Winning the Battles Within. And we'd like to show our thanks for your financial support by sending a copy of our newest booklet, Joshua was a brave and trustworthy leader of Israel who entered heaven having fought the good fight. Discover lessons for your life as you look at the life of Joshua and learn four keys to victory. Ask for your booklet when you send a ministry gift. Do you have a problem with pride? No? Well, then you need to tune in next week as we hear a message about this dangerous condition, the problem with pride, next time on Love Worth Finding.